Hello and welcome to the Transformational Speakers Podcast. I'm your host, Erin Lomanjek, and today I'm super excited. We've had like a couple of interviews today and we are just getting started because we have somebody amazing coming to us to teach us everything about lead generation, some high-end client acquisitions. Like there's some cool stuff. Like I am just been pumped up today. I feel like every time I get off one of these interviews, I need to get to work. I have notes over here about my online summit. I got notes over here about achieving high things today. And now we are jumping in again. So welcome, Marian Asano is a client ac acquisition expert, keynote speaker, author, and podcast host. He started with humble beginnings as an immigrant with little money and grew his influence through his service-based business and now generates over seven figures a year. Marion now teaches service-based business owners, authors, speakers, coaches, how to create high-end packages and automate their online sales process through personal branding and sales funnels. He hosts the High-End Client Acquisition Podcast with expert guests such as Dan, Dan Locke, Billy Jean, Pat Flynn, Sean Cannell, Jeremy Hayes, and Ping June. So welcome. I'm super excited about this. This is going to be fun. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Yeah, so tell us, I mean, we see that you came from humble beginnings, but what brought you to doing high-end client acquisition, big funnels? Tell us more about how you got to where you are. Sure. So first of all, again, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm super pumped about this interview. So, so to give you, um, I guess, just the short version of it, because uh, we can probably spend a while getting into the behind the scenes, but it was mainly, um, so a couple of years ago when I first um, I, I haven't started with directly with funnels, right? Like my first uh, business was a service-based business and it was literally selling transportation services. So that's how I got my foot in the door with, um, with the whole, you know, service-based and then actually understanding what lead generation and client acquisition actually means. So I got my start into the retail brick and mortar uh, type of environment, sort of say, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit different when you sell um, from a brick and mortar store, the human interaction plays a big, big role, right? Especially before you even get to connect to people, you need to make sure that you attract them into your, uh, into your process, right? So I guess everything now is it's just going online and everybody's just focusing on, right, oh, how can I automate this uh, and make it completely automated. But again, when, when I first got started, I just had to understand like, all right, this is a brick and mortar store. We are offering a service, transporting, you know, furniture and all kinds of other things, uh, equipment and, and fitness equipment and stuff like that. So my thought process was how can I put something in front of, how can I put our services in front of the people that actually needed the most at the right time and without just pushing it um, in front of them without having, you know, some sort of value. So, you know, of course, like I said, we can spend a lot of time uh, getting into, into the behind the scenes, but it was mainly understanding what do people need? People don't need anybody's services. People need their problem to be solved, period. Doesn't matter how you do it. It's like, it matters to come up with a process, you know, a proprietary process, in my opinion, for you to connect to them with, regardless if at the beginning is maybe with a story that it creates some emotion, or you know, number two is you really use the direct response type of approach. Doesn't matter how you do it, you need to make sure that you, you get in front of them, right? And after that, you need to create a bond, you need to, um, and then keep putting your services in front of them on and on and on, right? So after that, I, uh, I kind of got familiar with the whole sales funnel process and the, you know, the click funnel community. And that is the time where it completely skyrocketed. And I understood that we don't just sell, we don't just put a price on a service. We have to create an offer. We have to add bonuses. We have to add certain things that doesn't necessarily add more to the operation side or it doesn't like, we don't need to employ one, two, three more um, employees just for delivering that, pro that um, service, finding, you know, a unique way to add value to your service so you can create an offer and, and bundle it up so you can actually set it at a higher price. 
And that was when, uh, so our, my first funnel, it was an offer close to between five to 10 grand. And it was so much easier to just sell it to 200 people so we can cross, you know, a million in sales. So um, that's pretty much how I got started. And most people don't start with the biggest offer, right? Like, <laughs> exactly. Wow. Like, you know, I think my first, I did a beta of my Transformational Speakers Academy for like $97. And I had 100 people join me and I was like, yes. Then it's like, I got it out there. And what I always need is a lot of times I don't set the curriculum out ahead of time. Like I said, here are the things you're going to get. But I don't sit and do videos for hours on end. I say, okay, you're going to get drip the content on Monday. So Sunday, all I'm doing is putting the stuff together and making sure it's ready to go on Monday. And so every single time I did that, it was just easier for me because it seems so overwhelming to create this big course and try to map it all out. And I was like, uh, uh, and every time I sold that way, it has made such a difference. Right? So I love that you went for a big package when I was like, Oh, $97, my first <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah. But it took, it took about two years. Like I, of course I, I, uh, really fast forwarded there, but it took almost like two years until I even understood the whole, um, uh, sales funnel and the whole, you know, like, what do you do? Like, how do you add value in, you know, in different, in different uh, areas and how do you deliver that? So you don't drive yourself crazy, right? Like it's, it was, it was a process. Uh, but after I understood it, it was so much easier to, to put it together. Yeah. And I also think it feels like this like hidden secret about high end clients, right? Like who is looking for their, their problem to be solved and throwing money at it is not a big, a big deal. I think a lot of times people are marketing to the people who are at their level or lower and they don't realize that they're like having the same message around needing more money or needing more, right? These people just need more time. They need the shortcut. They need somebody to do it with them or for them. They're like, I'll throw money at that because I don't have to do it. Right. And so it's a different mindset. So it's kind of funny to think about on the opposite ends of that, you can have two different demographics and they just get different pieces of it, right? A hundred percent. And I'm and I'm um, I'm a big believer in in um, all price points, right? Like at the end of the day, when you offer somebody, let's say your high end um, offer is bringing people from point A to Z, your front end, your your hundred, but your one hundred or one forty seven or ninety seven or whatever you want to call it, is it just needs to bring people from A to B. And then, you know, maybe from A to C and A to D, like, you know, you can, and of course, at the beginning, it's so much easier for somebody to just sell a hundred dollar product or service just because it's easier to like, oh, I actually made a sale. Like, oh, I actually, I, I was able to do that, right? I'm not a big believer in starting out with a complete, because um, now like everybody's talking about you know, having a front end and then having three, four upsells and then a downsell and then a follow up with another upsell. And then all of a sudden at the end, you put them in on a, on a webinar and you try to sell a, a thousand, two thousand dollars. Right. But because every single offer, it's almost a business on its own. So every $97, every 147 has to be delivered, has to have a customer support type of scenario, right? Like people who have questions. Um, it's the deliverability of it is how people consume it is well what if i want to uh what if i want to refund the 147 but i want to keep the 97 and still keep me on the 47 dollar a month like that just creates too much headache for somebody just starting out yeah so that's why you know it's easier to to first get you know get your foot in the door with maybe a 100 bucks but then understand even if it's the same person that you sold that 100 bucks offer you just help them going from point A to point B. Now, what's the service or the product that you can put together and the offer that you can, you know, get them to the whole, uh, all, all the way until the end, right? Yeah. That customer journey, I think people usually are going, okay, what does my audience need? And they just like put something together. It's one thing. But if you actually map out your customer's journey, like there's, I, I remember when I got started, I never thought about the people who are scared to speak because that's not, it's not who I am. I was never afraid to speak in front of a room. So, but I had friends around me that were like, oh my gosh, it's like the worst thing for me. And it really means a lot. And, and I was like, okay, I can't not go back and teach something there. And so what I started with, with that was 
Just go live on Facebook, start learning to speak, start getting better at this, overcoming the fears of being seen and heard and all of that. And then you can start getting them into higher end stuff, right? And more and more often. And so I always feel like if you don't know where their point, like point A's are to point, to point Z, then you don't know where you're taking them. And every offer you create, you think about, okay, what's next for them? Well, I need to make something that's for them. And what's next for them? Right. So that anytime someone comes in and maybe they're not afraid to speak, but now they're ready to take their, their message to bigger stages, they can come up over here because you already have something for them too. Right. So I think mapping out that customer journey is really important. I'm a hundred percent. I do a hundred percent agree with this. And also a funny thing. I was putting together a workshop, right. And I was always thinking like in my head and I, and I think all of us, we are, um, we are guilty of this. Like we think that we know what people need. Why not just ask? Like I posted in a couple of groups that I, that I was the admin of it. And then also on my wall, on my Facebook wall. And I just asked the question, Hey guys, if I would be to do this, what's your biggest, your biggest struggle, um, around building your brand and having your message out there and things like that. So Everybody's starting to, uh, to answer to that question, right? And believe it or not, nine out of 10 people said, well, my biggest uh, struggle is I can't find a good enough VA to professionally edit my videos. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like I was thinking like all these advanced strategies that I was putting together and all, you know, all the crazy stuff that was in my head and actually people needed something else. And then we said, oh, if that's what you want, then guess what? We're gonna make it. So uh, basically, the people that do apply to, to come to this uh, intensive, this workshop, they actually record their videos on their own, but they send it to us ahead of time. So when they get to the workshop, their videos are already done, ready to go, edited, and we even have a green room where they can actually jump in and you know do other videos, extra videos and things like that. So that was just like, sometimes just ask, and people will tell you back, like, well, the people will respond, hey, I'm struggling with this, this, and that, and I want more of these. And the yeah. people will, will respond back. Well, and that's how you can build out your curriculum. So here's what I did, that Facebook Live course, overcoming fear kind of thing to get people started. I literally went live, said, here's a whole bunch of things I could teach. I am not creating this if nobody buys it, but what else do you want to learn? And so they would write in the comments during my Facebook Live, what are the other things they wanted to learn? I took notes and I was like, I'll do that. I'll put that in there. I'll put that in there. I'll put that in there. By the time I left that live broadcast, got on a plane and flew back to Seattle because I did it in Beverly Hills while I was down there. I had 28 sales by the time I got home. Love it. Yeah. That's, right? that's, that's the model that I love the most because, um, you, you know, you create your better group or your founders group, how I like to, to, uh, brief Amen now. And people do want to be part of, they do want to, found you know um the, the the group that you put in together and they, they want to become the founders of something new and they want to you know because it's so much easier than for them to become your brand ambassadors and and other people you know especially because they're the first in the group they'll get most of your attention and they'll be able to work with you in a more uh, almost like a one-on-one -on -one setting even though it's a small group you know five or ten people or something like that or 20 depending yeah. But then they know that it, because they're part of that, um, it's going to be so much easier for them to, to be recognized as the founders members. And, you know, it's so funny because I think as givers, as service providers, all of us, because usually we are, we're the ones that will jump into founders groups, right, and be those founding members, is that we all want to be able to serve one another and give feedback and say, hey, you know, I really like to do that, but I felt like something was missing here. And you're like, great, then I can add that in. Like, I think that like co-creating it with your founding members is huge because then you really know it adds extra value. Now that they all went through it, it's like, what would you pay for this? And they'll give you feedback now that you've gone through it. Now can I get some testimonials, right? And so it really does lend to a win, win, win. Everybody's winning. Everyone's getting what they want. And you not only got people through for the first time that you feel comfortable and you've added more to it now that it's so much easier to then go out and sell again. A hundred percent. Yes. I love it. So if somebody is starting out and I'm thinking like as a speaker, because here's something that I always run into. 
So many times people don't know how to put an offer together when they're speaking, right? So they might have like, like I have online courses, I have webinars, I have um, a, a book, I have like, I have so many other streams, right? I have events tickets coming up. I have like all these other things, but I don't think they think of the offer in mind when they start creating their speech to go in and go present. So when thinking about an offer, what is something that's important to think about if you're about to go take a stage? Is that customer's journey? Is it? really digging into to figuring that out? Or is it like, what's my next thing I'm offering? Right? Like, oh, well, I have this webinar coming up. I guess I could say that. Like, I love this thing because this is a place that most of my audience will send me those messages, like you said, behind the scenes. Like, but I don't know what I'm supposed to offer. Do I have to offer my one-on-one? Can I offer something else? Like, what can I offer? So talk about what you would think about creating one of those offers, that packaging. Sure. So, Every time, and, and this can apply regardless if you are about to take on uh, a physical stage or if it's about an online stage, if it's, let's say, a webinar or, like, let's say in this scenario, because you mentioned the, um, the stage itself, I like to, oh, I never like to reinvent the wheel. I always like to look at the people that I want to become, right? So I always look at my competitors and I look at, all right, what's their offer? What exactly are they selling? And I usually try to look at between three to five, three to ten people. Now, some people will say, "Oh, well, nobody's selling what I'm selling. I'm unique." Well, that's it's a wrong mindset because it's going to be hard for you to figure. You're going to have to, you know, eat all the cost to test it out to see if, if your audience even wants to buy what you have to offer. Right. So that's why I like to look at competitors. Don't copy them, but I like to hack them. So I would look at their offers. I would see exactly what they're selling. And of course, I would put my own approach to it. I will make it better. I'll add maybe, I'll I'll look to see what is some white space between those offers. So maybe somebody doesn't have a group coaching call attached to their offer. Maybe somebody don't have some, um, maybe a one hour onboarding call if it's a lot of tech involved, right? Uh, Maybe somebody needs more one-on-one. Maybe I'll, I'll, jump in there and I'll offer maybe for the first, uh, you can create some scarcity in there, right? Like you can add for the first 40 people that sign up a one-on-one. Like at the beginning, especially if this is your first offer, I think the the one-on-one approach, it's a pretty powerful one, especially when you bundle it up with your your course, with another service. With I know time is super valuable, but at the same time, we need to understand that, all right, time is super valuable, but also the connection that you create during those first 30, 40 people that you, that's going to buy from you, you have to look at those things as lessons. Like people will tell you like, Hey, uh, I want more of these things and I want, and I, and I'm struggling with this and I'm struggling with this and the other thing. And I recently I was talking to somebody uh, and she said to me, I'm so sick and tired of um, all the courses and the, and the group coaching, I just need a little more hands-on approach because this whole funnel thing is tough. Or, you know, like there, a lot of people have different, um, uh, different things that they, they want to fix. But coming back to the offer itself, I always like to look, like I said, three to 10 people, look exactly what they offer. And of course, it's also understand who's the audience because you have to also make sure that the audience that you're going to talk to is relevant to your, uh, your, your speech. Also, the presentation to be aligned, like, for example, if you come and you talk to, you talk, you know, let's say your talk is about motivation and then you go ahead and sell marketing, it's going to be hard, right? Like you have to make sure that your talk is also in line with your offer that you're selling and making sure that is more value than your competitors because your competitors may be, you know, well-known. They may have more credibility than you. They may have you know, more people on their list. So you have to hack them but understand exactly if they have three or four bonuses, maybe you can do five or six. Uh, And again, I think the access to you is the most valuable thing that you can add, especially when you create, you know, real scarcity, not fake, you know, like when when you try to sell a course and you say that we only have 20 courses available, that's like BS. Like you can't, 
<laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> um, so that's my approach every time. And regardless if, if we work, even when we work with private clients and they say, I don't know what to sell. Well, let's take a look and let's understand what's the problem that you're solving and who are your competitors. And then if you really say that, okay, I don't have any competitors, then we'll look at the problem that you're solving and then we'll start going deeper into uh, the, the key phrases and keywords that people are searching around the problem that you're solving. And then we understand like, all right, if only 10 people are searching for that, then might as well you, you change <laughs> what, you want, what you want to sell because it's not a lot of people in there, right? So we always like to, to hack uh, your biggest, your direct competitors. And I love going into markets that have big competition because it's, that's a health audience that's willing to pay, especially if they, if those guys sell high ticket prices, it's so much easier to just put your own approach to it. And you know, that's the ways that you can hack authority to, you know, have them come on your podcast or actually try to maybe work with them. And then of course, you know, if that doesn't work, just put your offer in front of their audience and boom, all of a sudden, I'm talking about online, right? Online, yeah. Um, yeah, and then the same thing would replicate in, a, in, a, in an offline stage. Yeah. It's making sure that your offer is so relevant and you just create a more compelling, uh, you know, more compelling bonus, uh, more value to it and keep adding you know, on the stack, like you keep adding more and more than, than your competitors. Yeah, and I think it's true. I think you should, because you should always know there are competitors, uh, because if there's not, are you really solving a problem? I exactly. mean, like that's the, that's the point. And, it might just be an expensive hobby. Yeah, and when you look at it, look at, yeah, and also their audience might be different. Like for me, uh, Lisa Nichols' audience might not like me because they're, they're definitely, they're very cultural. They have, different, they have a different way of speaking. They have their own thing. But at the same time, I'm looking at all her offers, right? And looking at what she offers and how she offers it and all of that because she's do, been doing it for 20 years, right? Then you look at Lisa Sasevich and both of them now are stepping down. I'm like, it's giving me more room. Like, bring it on, right? <laughs> I'm like, let me just take yeah. all Lisa Sasevich's stuff for the speak to sell and really tell them, show them how to deeply connect with their audience. And then we can start working on things, right? Like you just start looking at it because there might be, their offers might be great or they might be a total different audience. You wouldn't use any of their language or any of the, the kind of stuff because, unless that's your people, right? I get people attracted to me who, you know, service-based business owners who have a message they want to create a movement with, who want to, you know, spread this to bigger stages, who want to do this globally. This isn't a small task. And it's really funny that, you know, so many times people are like, oh, but you know, there's these people, they're all these competitors and all this stuff. Let me just go steal their stuff. They're not your audience. And if I use language that's not mine, you can see it. I'm off in my communication. And at the same time, you're attracting the wrong people that you don't want to work with. Right? So like, yeah, that's so true. look at the offers in that way. Not that you're going to write it the same way or you're going to do it the same thing, but look at it from, okay, here's all these things. Like you said, find the places that are missing the white space. And I love yeah. that because that's a really great way of looking at it. And then push it aside and create it. Like, don't look at it because I have a photographic memory. So if I continue to look at it, I'll type up that stuff and not even know I'm doing it. So I say, put it aside so you're actually using your language. Because <laughs> if you're really looking at it and then you're like, oh, let me just change one word. That's not yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then but of course, when you attach your story to it and you have your own way of, of uh, you know, speaking to your audience and, and again, like you said, um, your message, it's not the same message that your competitors have. So that's why you have to create your own. Um, the whole hacking part is just for you to not have to reinvent the wheel from scratch. Um, it's just knowing that, all right, that type of price point, it's actually working. And because I have so many competitors, cool. I'm just going to jump real quick in there and have my own way of saying and my own way of phrasing things and of course your story it's it's impossible to be replicated by somebody else so for sure uh, yeah 
No, and I love that because I also love that, you know, with ClickFunnels, Russell says, go look at each other, the people's websites, go check them out. And that's brilliant because you should see what's out there so that you're not A, being redundant and doing the same thing. But also, I think it does give us all great ideas. Now, it's just the people that are so worried about copycatting. Just don't copycat. Just make it your own. Exactly. I love it. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about how you have been using, well, let's even say it, how have you been using your podcast to get more? Let's talk, that's a marketing strategy. How do you, are you sure. using it? Are you getting clients out of it? Are you, you using it just for um, sales? Do you have bumpers on it? Like, let's talk. Yeah, I have a couple of ways that, uh, that I'm using the podcast. And, and by the way, my podcast is pretty new. Uh, it's only a few months old. Um, now, what I do want to, back it up a little bit um it started as a video podcast and now some of them are audio but they're not a video and then a few of them that actually have been video i actually went back and re record my side of the questions to be relevant when he first started um he got a total rebrand about three months ago when i actually launched it on on uh, itunes so the way that i use it now is in a couple of ways number one of course um connecting because you know connecting with other people like it allows me to have a platform that now i'm not just saying to somebody hey can i pick your brain for one hour i'm saying i want to share your message with my audience like that is huge and i want people to understand like it's especially when you're first starting out in a in a complete in a completely new um, industry for you at the time. Let's say having a podcast is one of the most powerful things that you can do. Like for example, let's say you know let's let's take Dan Lock for for instance, right? Like an hour over to him. Um, I, I don't want to put some some crazy numbers out there, but it's it costs a lot of money to talk to him, right? Um, the same thing with you know Pat Flynn. If you would be to pay a consulting fee to talk to Pat Flynn, it costs a lot. But having um, a podcast it just allows me to connect with you know high level people. And sometimes you can do it even if you have. Trust me, my pitch when I had like zero people on my on my podcast or like zero guests, um, it was hey, I don't have an audience. I'll pay for this video and this audio to be in front of people. I'll pay for my own money. If I need to pay three grand to have a hundred thousand views on it, I'll do it. Um, and you tell me what audience, and of course I will actually do my research and I will, I will say, you know, this, it seems that this is your audience. So I'll make sure that all these type of people will see this video. And by the way, at the end, let me know if you have something to, um, get something to to promote i'll be happy to spread the word and even become an affiliate if i you know if i use the product or the service but anyway so the way that i now that's number one connecting with other uh, influencers thought leaders um people that i want to you know to connect with i'm um, going to host an online summit in september a high-end client acquisition summit it is going to be insanely powerful because it's going to bring on um not one, but more, because I want, like, a lot of people have different ways of learning, right? Like, they, somebody that will learn from me how to acquire high clients, they may not relate to uh, somebody else in the same space that teach the same thing, right? Or they don't relate to me, but they relate to the other person. So, you know, things like that. So I want to bring different um, approaches to that. So Online Summit, of course, it allows me, it's so much easier if I reach out to the previous guest that I had, hey guys, do you want to be on my, my online summit uh, as a guest speaker? You know, most of them will say yes. And they already said yes. Number three is um, it grows my email list and also my messenger bot. So if you go to, if you listen to my podcast, at the end, uh, I mentioned where to go to actually sign up for a monthly giveaway where you can win all kinds of things, books, courses, coaching, and all kinds of things. When people go there and they, uh, it's just a requirement, it's an automated thing. Uh, it brings, it tells you what to do is just subscribe, rate and review and send a, spend, send a screenshot. It's gonna automatically add you to the uh, messenger bot and to the email list. So these are the, the main three things. And of course, after that, we have an automated follow-up sequence that will bring people to mainly either on a webinar, depending which, part of the process you jump in or uh, to a phone call. 
And then of course, from there, there we'll either, so our main product slash service is we'll map out your entire client acquisition uh, process for you to know how to implement it. And of course, moving forward, you can either do it yourself or hire us to do it for you. I love that. Yeah. And I think it's great because I think so many times people go, well, why would I do a podcast or why would I do a video series or why would I do a summit or all of these things. And it's so powerful when you think about it's one more marketing tool, you know, my bumper, as you listen, as you're listening to this, my bumper, my starts now with the transformational speaker summit. It ends with the transformational speaker summit because I want more people to come to the speaker summit in September. Right? So you can use it to even, like you say, get them onto your list, to sell to them, to affiliate something if you wanted. Like, there are so many ways you can use it. And I think people aren't thinking big enough when it comes to something like this as a platform. You know, it's a really great marketing tool. And people, when they come to you from your podcast, oh my gosh, when you get a call and it's like, oh my God, I feel like I'm speaking to somebody famous right now. I've binge watched and listened to all of your stuff. Oh my gosh, you're so amazing. How do I work with you? They're ready to go. They're like ready to sign the check. They just need to know how much. It is the weirdest feeling, but it's like one of the highest conversions. And Pat Flynn and Shalene Johnson were the ones to tell me, like they're really stuck in my head, that you can sell so much more because people, you're like the voice of God in their head. You know, you know how often do you plug yeah, in your ears? It. Because like the podcast, it, it allows you to one multitask, but in the same time, like when I say multitask is you can go to the gym or let's say you are just in your daily commute, but for one hour or 45 minutes for somebody to really just listen to you, like you don't get that on a blog. You don't get that in a video. You just don't get that like probably anywhere else. Right. Uh, just like it's powerful. Like you, you know, you, plug in your earbuds and then boom for like 45 minutes as long as you of course you need to provide you know good quality content and, and uh, content and also um, value for people that can take actionable steps from it but then it's like after a couple couple uh, episodes it just feels like you really know that person <laughs> yeah you do and you feel like man I, I you know I already know her stories I know <laughs> You know, like I know about her kids. I know. Okay. And you really do feel like, you know, that person outside of anything else. You're like, wow, I have this relationship and that's when they want to buy from you. Right. That's the best thing. They you build enough relationship, enough value. They're automatically like, well, how much is it? Where do I sign up? How do I get in? <laughs> I love it. What do you think is the, I love that you say that your high end acquisitions, your high end packaging, all of your offers that are high end need to have you right? Like, because I think so many times coaches are probably work overworking themselves and over delivering and all these things. And then they bottleneck and they have no time to themselves and they can't go out and market new people. They can't because all they're doing is delivering. So when you say like create this like false security, safety or scarcity, it's true because in a way it's like, yeah, but if you want to work with me, it's a lot more money, right? Cause I'm going to give you the goods. Because I only have so much time in, in, in a day, right, that I can allocate to this. So, you know, if you like this approach, and I'll be happy to do it. But, of course, it's going to be a higher end uh, price point. Yeah, and I think in that customer journey, I think it's good for people who are just starting out to do some coaching stuff, right? Have that as their one, their one-on-one, -on -one, I should say, not coaching, but one-on-one. -on -one. And then go, okay, I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm not going to be at capacity. So now maybe I should try a group right? And maybe now you have, then that's two offers. So when you're on the phone with somebody, you're like, well, I have two, like you can work with me and here's what that is. And if that's too much, then why don't you join the group program? Right. And it just feels easy, but it's knowing that customer journey. Like we said at the beginning, you have to know all the places that people are going to need to come in at and where they want to play. Some people are like, you can't put me in a group. I get bored. <laughs> I get bored in group coaching. And I feel like what, especially in a group where there's like, people who have never done like a Facebook live and then people who are already like building, you know, a million dollar company, right? Like it's not the same. Their needs are totally different. And this person's been doing Facebook live for like three years now or however long it's been out now. <laughs> I can't even remember, but it's like, 
And, and I sit there and I'm like, huh, I'd rather be in a group. If it is going to be a group, it has to be highly procured and it's got to be people at my level or above that are just within this like gap so that we are all kind of working towards the same things and that it makes sense for all of us. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then, uh, cause you mentioned something right at the beginning of this um, question, like how, like, when do you know, is it a good time to jump into group or when, so, you know, there are, there are a few ways to go about it. Like some people will say, well, I just love the one-on-one approach. Cool. Double your price. You lose half of your customers, but then the other half is going to pay you the same amount. Right? So that can be one way if you don't like a uh, group. Now, of course, one-on-one is going to be hard to scale um, from a point of, and then of course there are ways, like if you want to hire people that can deliver some part of your message, but at the end of the day, like people, if they pay for one-on-one, they want you in that one-on-one, right? So it will come to the to the point where, hey, um, you either scale it to the group or you just package it in a course for the main important question, then probably seven out of 10 people will ask you all the time. So they have to follow your framework um, and then they can get maybe you know one hour a month or whatever, but essentially the group portion is just like I'm I'm a big uh, believer in that because a lot of people they push their other the other people in the group with their results like they'll you'll see somebody like oh if that person got result I'll probably be able to do it too if, you know and keep going on and on and on so um, yeah I'm a big believer that you'll have to at some point get into in, into the group portion of it. Yeah, because there's got to be leverage, right? 100%. So we're working with you. Say, say I come to you and I'm like, all right, here's all my things. Here's all my offers. Here's all the things I have. What is the process you walk people through? You just look at all of it and, and create. Like, because I know my, of course, like I have my small, like $97 product and then I have a $50,000 product, right? So there's a big difference in there and there's a journey through there right? But is that what you help map out? Like, tell me a little bit more. Like if I was coming to you and I said, here's all the things I have, kind of walk me through what it would be like to work with you. Sure. So we have a success path all the time. So we like to look at things like first we look at the assets that you uh, that you already have, but then we need to understand like, instead of just looking directly at the, um, at the business side of it, we like to reverse engineer a little bit and see what is it that you like as a person? Like, what do you like? Do you like, do you need more time? Do you want, like, what exactly do you like? And what's your monthly uh, income goal? Like personally, not just the business sales, right? Because we all know like, right, it's sales, but then nobody really talks about the expenses and nobody talks about the money that uh, the rest of the people don't see, right? So we first need to understand that. So based on the, uh, on the success path, like we'll say, all right, some people may, may be at zero, but let's say in this scenario, you may be at six if it's a seven step or a nine step process, right? So then we look at your, uh, the product that has the highest ROI uh, in this moment and how you've been selling it so far, right? Like let's say if it's, if it's a, a group coaching program or let's say you have a course, most likely sometimes we can bundle, bundle them together and attach a closer, a high ticket closer in the middle. So for example, let's say you have a course that's selling for a thousand bucks and let's say you also have group coaching that it's maybe, I don't know, another thousand dollars or something like that. Well, maybe we can package them together and attach a human interaction in the middle and sell it for 5,000, right? So instead of, so that's why we first look at the assets that you have and then we look at the, on the success path that we uh, walk through all the time every customer. And we understand where do you like where you at in this process, and based on your personal income goals and your lifestyle goals, right? Because you'll say, "Hey, um, I want more free time, but I want more income." All right, cool. Usually, a high end package will have to be sold with a closer, or will have to be sold with like over the phone. You want more time? You're not going to do this. We'll have to get somebody in the middle to be able to sell it. And of course, it's a it's a process in there of that person being you know, uh, on border with the right type of mindset and with the right, like to get familiar with, uh, with what you sell and what your audience wants and all that. Um, and then 
usually it's pretty simple. That's the process. So then, all right, if it's a $5,000 product or service, how can we even, you know, maybe we can make it better. Maybe we can add once every two months or maybe once a month an in-person 10 people intensive, right? And that can be an extra five grand, right? So we look at ways of scaling, but we only take one product or service at a time. And the sales mechanism, the sales process of it, again, if it's, if it's more than two grand, it has to be done with a phone call. If we need to have a phone call in place, it's gonna be an application funnel. Now, how is that application funnel going to be delivered? It can be multiple ways. It can be through a webinar, it can be to you know, Facebook Lives, but essentially they all come down to paid advertising and we'll look at the platforms that are the best. And in my opinion, 2019 and probably 2020, 2021, moving forward, it's gonna be YouTube more than Facebook. Um, so then we just, you know, reverse engineer it into the tech side where, all right, if we need, you know, if the product is 10K, let's say to make it easier and we need $100,000 a month, then we need 10 products. Well, for 10 products, how many phone calls we need? Well, if our closer is good enough to do a 25, we need 10 phone calls for him. In order to get 10 phone calls, we're going to need probably you know, 40, uh, 30, 30 applications, let's say. In order to get 30 applications, we're gonna get this many leads and boom, boom, boom. Yeah. On and on and on. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love it. Because I think that's the piece that people create it, but then they don't know what to do with it. Or they, you know, don't understand, like we were even talking about knowing all these different places that you can play that's maybe a little bit of a bonus and, and like these pieces that you can play with within your offers that bring in more money, right? Or you're like, great. Oh, I got a 50,000. Oh, what's this high closer thing, right? Like you're like, people start going, oh, I don't even know what that is. There are people oh, out there so who will sell yourself. I can back it up. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that I, I just throw that out there. So a high ticket closer is just a person that is very good at selling. Now, the reason that it's, it's called closer is because he's not selling, it's closing. It's making you money, right? Um, so that person at first it can be you. Like, it's just a matter of, like, the reason that so many times it's not really the best idea for you to do that, it's also framing. Um, you know, when somebody is getting on the phone, because you're so passionate about your product or service, you may forget to sell and you'll start get, you'll start right into like, what are you doing? And you're literally going to just give it all away on that first call. And I'm pretty sure all of us, uh, <laughs> have been to that place and it's, it's just, it's just the way that it is. Right. So that person, um, so now they're big groups, right? Like it's, I'm part of a group now that it's, I think it's like 5,000 people um, doing closing in there. So essentially you hire them on a commission based uh, salary. So let's say they get a percentage of your offer. And so many times they may help you improve that offer, right? So they know if they don't sell, they don't eat. Like it's as simple as that. Now, of course, uh, these will not be person that you you hire full time. It'll be, a person that you uh, almost hire as a contractor and they'll provide this for you. Now, of course, you need to have, in order for you to be able to have something like that in place, you need to have a system, you need to have a machine that speeds leads. If you don't have leads, you're not gonna have anything to give to this guy, he's not gonna be able to sell, he's not gonna stick with you, right? So you need to have a machine that transforms your message into a person that's interesting, interested to hearing more about it. And of course, you want to pre-qualify them because you don't want this guy to talk to everybody that's looking for a five hundred dollar pro um, product or service because you know it's no point to have somebody on the phone. But it's good, like if you have a downsell like that, instead of losing the person completely, you can you know that can be like a backup thing. No, and I think that's the key that people don't do. Like I always start with my highest. Oh, that's too much. Well, will I have this? Okay, well, I have this. I have, there's always in the backwards all the way down. Like, okay. And even if, if even if somebody slips through and they, they just are like, mm, I'm not quite ready. I don't have any money right now, whatever. I'm like, great, digest my free stuff. Go to my podcast right now. Here it is. And I at least get them to subscribe, right? Like, there's True. that. It is, it is a quick 
quick little uh, trick. Now, of course, time to time, everybody slips through that. On the application page, uh, even on mine, and we can probably link it in the uh, description somewhere, it's a question in there. If I would, if, if my help could get you to where you want to be, regardless of, of what it is, right? Um, would you be interested in spending or in investing um, five thousand dollars or more on somebody's service or whatever? And then it's three options. Number one is you crazy. Number two is yes. Number three can be uh, or no. Number one is yes. Number two is uh, I don't have the funds, but I can make it happen. Number three is you crazy. Well, somebody that's clicking on you crazy, you can do different things. Um, if you have the band and the capacity to actually offer them a phone call you'd at least know that that person it's not willing to spend that high end. So don't even bother trying to sell, you know, $10,000, just sell or just put them on a sequence and send them emails about your $200 course or something like that. Right now, yeah. of course, there are like ways and ways to go about it, but I guess it is a trick in there that we can all use, especially if we need to maximize our time spent over the phone. Yeah, because I don't want to be on a phone. If somebody slips through somehow, right? If it doesn't go at through that, know. then at least, at least know I know. It. Yeah, I go, yeah. I got some places for you to play. Let's. Just, I'll just keep throwing <laughs> up a catalog. You pick where, and we're going to start there. <laughs> or instead of allowing them to book a one-hour um, strategy call, allow them to book a 15-minute call just to maybe hear them out, right? Like if you decide what you want to do. But like now, from a tech standpoint, you can do all these things. Like people that are just... Click on one thing, show them another, uh, yeah, another thing, things like that. So it's so much, it's so much more powerful, in my opinion. Yeah, and I would say when hiring someone to be your your high ticket closer, find someone that also resonates with your delivery. Because if you're really high and excitable and have all this enthusiasm, and that, but then they get on a call with some like. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be this today. And that's what it's going to be. That's what they're expecting. Cause that's the front person. And it's like, wait, there's a confusion. The person I saw on that ad, that video doesn't sound like, like the same energy as this person. And then I'm back to this, like, Oh, make sure they have the same kind of energy, the same kind of like, it doesn't have to be the same, but it's gotta be close so that they feel like it's a, a company. It feels like it's one, you know, central unit. It's, it's funny thing that you mentioned that now um, after I understood the whole concept of like, you know, really going deep into funnels and stuff, I went back to my first, uh, to my first company and I pulled the sales manager for probably like two days and we recorded like 20, 30 videos and everybody that, cause he was the main point that he was getting the first call and everybody that were getting on that call, they were now seeing ads with him. And people started going like crazy. They were like, oh my God, is this Victor from that YouTube ad? I can't believe that I'm, I'm talking to a YouTuber. And the guy comes back to me and say, dude, I don't know what you did, but uh, people think that I'm famous. I don't know why. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I, when I, when I first heard that, I was like, you got to be kidding me. So this stuff works for any kind of, um, as long as it's a sales process in place with a human interaction. Yes. Like, it's just, it's funny. It's, and it definitely, for a high-end package, you got to be on the phone. Like you said, what'd you say, over 2,000? Yeah, whatever is 2,000 plus, you have to, it's just like, think about it. You can keep pushing it on, on a webinar, but it's hard for somebody to pull their their credit card and say, yes, I'm going to buy a 3K. Unless you are really, you know, unless your personal brand is like really, really big and people really trust you. Um, yeah. But since we're talking about people just putting together their first, high-end package um, it, you have to do that and at first I almost recommend being you for the first maybe 100 calls to at least get a sense of oh so that because when you hire somebody you can expect them to do something if you don't know how to correct them well like time to time you may need to record like if you see that out of 30 calls you're not getting a sale you may need to record you may need to listen to some of the calls and see what's up <laughs> and you get feedback like we just talked about like Getting information from your audience, knowing what they want, that kind of thing. If you are on that call, they're like, well, you know what I was really thinking is I really want more speaking gigs. And I'm like, 
That's what they all say to me. I want more speaking gigs. No, you need, do you actually need speaking gigs or do you actually need to close more money from the front of the room? Because if it's more money from the front of the room, more speaking gigs isn't going to do that for you. There's something off in your delivery. If you're not converting 30% of your room or not, like there's something off, whether it's your positioning, whether it's how you showed up, your vocal tonality, your delivery, something went off. And if you're not closing that, you need to go back to that, not getting more gigs because that's not going to help you, right? Yeah, and you then to learn maybe, that on the phone. Exactly, and then maybe some, because uh, if you're not closing one-on-one, you're probably not going to close one-to-many, right? Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really that simple. And, and, and like you said, you may get more gigs, but maybe some conferences don't allow you to pitch. You know, what do you do then? Like, yes, if you lead collecting and, and things like that, but, you know, like those more of something that doesn't work, it's not always the, the right answer. <laughs> yeah. All right. So tell my audience, how can we get more of you? Where they can they find you? I know it'll be in the, in the notes, but tell us where they can find more of you. Yeah. So the simplest way, like I put together the, the easiest blueprint ever and exactly what I, what I just talked to you and a couple other things also how you actually are positioned as a, as an authority in, in your customer's eye. Like when somebody gets one piece from you, let's one information. If it's a free video, if it's a free booklet, if it's a free PDF, like, you know, you need to have a system that you stay in front of them all the time on every platform without you having to physically be there every day. So that's like this, um, this blueprint that I'm talking about, the high client acquisition uh, accelerated blueprint is what I call is just a one page that it shows you like all everything that we talked about right now. And you can get that if you go to highendclientacquisition.com. I love it. Simple, That's yeah, simple as that. And you'll, um, you'll see exactly everything that I just talked for the last like 45 minutes. Uh, it's laid out in there on one page. So you can actually, take your offer and understand where you are in that process. And you can just plug it in and see, I'm missing this, this, and that, and I'm missing the other two. All right. So here I am. I need to work on the other things and it's so much easier to, and also it gives you the idea like, all right, problem solving video one, two, and three. I usually, every time when we uh, work with somebody, we, you know, we need to come up with three because people here, they watch and they understand in, you know, from a different aspect every time. Even if you're talking about the same thing, it's just people consume things differently, right? Especially when they are on different platform. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm taking this a uh, little bit away, but people that are looking on Facebook, they think differently than people that are on YouTube because on YouTube, people are searching for a solution for their problem. On Facebook, they're looking to connect with people and see cats and dogs and other things like that, unless they're marketers. If they're marketers, they want to see ads, right? But if a regular consumer yeah. um, is, just, is just looking to you know, communicate to other people. So you have to interrupt them. Well, on YouTube, when you go, you have to start the video differently because people are searching for that. So you have to know how to phrase the video and put it in front of them when they're actually searching for it. For that so that's why we need to you know create even if it's the same message you have to frame it differently for every platform I think and, yeah. and the, good and the easiest way to to create that omnipresence effect is just through paid advertising <clears throat> I'm sorry and you don't need to go crazy at the beginning because you can literally do you know one to five dollar day uh, campaigns and just testing out things out and see what message people resonate with with the most and then scale from there yeah it's, it's not that complicated as as a lot of people make it to be i think that's that's the thing when you think advertising paid advertising oh that comes in a lot of risk and oh no yeah but it also gives you feedback too like you want feedback from your audience you're gonna see real quick what they like and don't like and what they click on, they don't click on. It's just it's essentially a stage every time, right? Like it, regardless if it's an offline stage, if it's in person and people see you, or if it's you from the comfort of your home and you just talk to, a, you know, for your iPhone and you start talking and you put this video in front of them, that's a stage because it's people, it's more eyeballs. It's just a stage. It's just as simple as that. That's how I like to look at it because if not, you just think like, oh, I don't want to pay for ads. Well, 
that's a wrong way. You pay for that flight to get you to the to the event. It's the same thing that you have to pay to put you know your message in front of other people. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and there are a lot of pay to play stages too. I mean, that's when you get to be good and you know your numbers, you will pay to be on someone's stage because you know you can make more money than that. A hundred percent. Yeah, that, that makes, and, and most of the times, I would probably say nine out of 10 times, it, it actually works better. Um, Cause you know, if you keynote, then you get paid, you know, 20, 30 grand. But if you can, if you can offer something valuable to the audience and the audience and you know, and you close at the end and let's say you sell something that it's 10 K and it's, you know, you just say, <laughs> let's say you sell 20 packages it's, you know, you can do the math is $200,000. And uh, as long as your, you know, your presentation matches the product that you're selling, it's not that, you know, it's not that hard. Yeah. For sure. So my favorite question that I ask all my interviews is about your future self. So I was talking about my future self. It's ELJ. She's got um, a New York Times bestselling book. She's got a $40 million company. She's got all these things. So all of the stuff that I currently am experiencing, she's way past and sees like the light at the end of the tunnel through the struggles, through the things that I'm working through, figuring out what worked and didn't work. But she always, I always bring her in when I need to ask for advice, like, what am I doing? So if your future self was to come to you today, what would he say to you? Oh, wow. Um, I guess stay the course, because you probably have it figured out, but make sure that you don't lose track of what's your actual goal. Because, you know, we all find ourselves guilty of jumping to another thing when, uh, when another opportunity comes in. And I think that's my, not necessarily that I'm jumping from like one to one, but every time when a new opportunity comes in, in place, I always need to step back for a little bit and understand myself and say, all right, is this opportunity as, as big as it looks? Would it bring you closer to what you want to be in five years? Because if not, you may just put it in a drawer and wait a couple more years. So I guess that would be my, <laughs> my advice. I love it. Cause that's what I do. I actually have a mind map of like the things I'm working on and where things are. And if some, a new opportunity comes in, let's say a podcast, like, Oh, I should host a podcast. I had that in a little circle down below for a long time, like two years before I actually pulled the trigger and did it. But it was because I was too busy doing all these other things that it wasn't really helping yet. I needed the foundation of that. Then I can go, okay, now I'm ready to take on something new. What would that be? Let's do the podcast throw the podcast in there. So it's like, as new opportunities come, it's definitely easy to squirrel out and see. And some of us that are really great at business can see how lucrative it can become, the opportunities that can come. So you're starting to play this all out, but then you go, wait, 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 let's go back to the beginning. Does this get me closer to my goal? You know, and we're so creative at being able to connect the dots to it, but you really got to sit with it and go, does it, is it really going to get me there? And I love that. Uh -huh. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, and I, I think in all of us, like uh, every time when you grow in your you know personal development uh, process or you in your business, like whatever, just new opportunities will come like every single day, and and new and new things will come up, and you're like, oh, I want a piece of that, and I want a piece of that, and I want to get into real estate, and I want to be that, you know, like all kinds of things. Um, and it's just if it doesn't bring you closer to what you want to do at that time. Uh, you may want to just put it in a drawer. It's probably not going away. Uh, it's just it's just that scarcity mindset that we're like, oh no, if I don't jump into this, um, I'll probably lose it. So yeah. I think we all we are all guilty of this at some point. But if we are strong enough to to realize that, I think that's that can be our our best strength, I guess. Yeah. Stop building other people's empires. I know, right? <laughs> I, I did it for a long time thinking that it was going to like there were, I could see all these things that could be created from it and none of that stuff happened. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the funny thing is a lot of people come and, and I'm pretty sure you get into this too. Like, Hey, um, would you like to partner up in this? And guess what? I'll have to do the most of the selling or the thing. And then you <laughs> yes. I know. Or they're like, Hey, you should come speak with us. Yeah. I put more butts in seats. That's why I get it. I totally get that. You know, I'm like, no, thanks. I'll pass. I don't have time to put butts in seats for you. I got my own things to put my butts in seats for. 
I love it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the key. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for listening. And we will see you on stage. Thanks for having me.